Patreon is at it again. I really think that we need to discuss the possible violations of antitrust laws associated with this. Well, crap. Looks like YouTuber Law has already got into this. Still, I think there are some aspects of this that we really need to get into, though, like the concept of a group boycott, Tim Pool, and YouTuber Law. Great. Just great. I've been researching this for days to make sure that I understood the law and the subject before I made a video about it, and now this? Okay folks, if you want to get into this subject, YouTuber Law and Tim Pool have both done a good job covering the legal aspects involved. So, I've added the links to their content in the description right down here. I'm still going to talk about it though. This is really important and could affect the future of online transactions. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. When YouTube started providing a platform for amateur creators to make video content and post it on the web, they started a revolution in internet creativity. Naturally, YouTube found a way to make a lot of money on those videos by running ads on them. That's the free market in action, folks, and I approve. Those creators started receiving a share of the advertising revenues in 2007. Again. I approve, as content creators who make videos which bring in more subscribers, more viewers, and more money for YouTube should also be able to make money from that content. Now YouTube decided that they were going to have to refine their ad placement algorithms to make sure that they didn't offend their advertisers. That makes sense. While YouTube has constantly refined its algorithms and its ad revenue sharing programs, we have to remember that it was formed by three guys who worked at PayPal when they wrote the program. Online transaction companies have been a part of YouTube since before it was released, in one way or another. After PayPal came Stripe, an online transaction processing company similar to PayPal, but things really took off for content creators with the advent of Patreon in 2013. Patreon is a subscription-based membership processing company specifically designed to support content creators, and they use both Stripe and PayPal to handle their transactions. It sure would be a shame if these companies were acting as a trust instead of acting to earn trust, wouldn't it? Especially since PayPal and Stripe together process more than 80% of online transactions, and Patreon is the principal member services-based crowdfunding site for online content creators. Now, way back in 1890, 14 years before John Ambrose Fleming invented the vacuum tube, Senator John Sherman decided that there were far too many deliberate agreements between major companies to control the markets, so he authored the bill which became the Sherman Antitrust Act. The Sherman Act forbids companies from restraining trade or commerce in the markets and specifically uses the words conspiracy and monopoly. Companies who became monopolies unintentionally were allowed to continue to do business, which is why Microsoft wasn't broken up. But those who took deliberate steps to eliminate their competition by limiting access to the free markets were busted into smaller competing companies. But that wasn't enough protection for consumers and small businesses, so in 1914, the Clayton Antitrust Act was passed. It strengthened provisions against anti-competitive practices and specifically barred mergers and acquisitions, which would create a monopoly. They also passed the Federal Trade Commission Act, establishing the agency charged with enforcement of antitrust law, the Federal Trade Commission. That was better, but it still wasn't enough. So a series of lawsuits established that group boycotts, a business practice in which several competitors collectively force or attempt to force another business to cease operations, are antitrust violations. Now, cases involving potential antitrust violations have two thresholds under which they are judged. Per se, meaning that the practice or something similar enough as to be effectively the same practice has already been considered by the courts. And by rule of reason in which a new kind of possible violation is considered. Now, lawsuits based on the actions of online transaction services against client companies have not been very successful. 
From what I've seen in my research, companies like Patreon have been named principally as co-defendants in nuisance lawsuits like the lawsuit of 2017, Ozonian et al. versus Herrera et al., and have easily defended themselves. In the current business climate on the internet, however, a claim of antitrust violation by right of reason might just succeed. You see, there's a service called Subscribestar that provides subscriber membership services similar to Patreon. When Patreon decided to boot Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon of Akkad, off of their platform, Mr. Benjamin proceeded to sign up with Subscribestar. What's more, due to the nature of Patreon's actions, a lot of their customers also left Patreon, as did some of Patreon's biggest clients. Naturally, he plugged his new service, and just a couple days later, several of those clients moved their subscription services to Subscribestar as well. Now, a couple days later, both Stripe and PayPal terminated their contracts with Subscribestar, leaving that company scrambling to find a payment processing service that can handle all of the transactions. Remember, PayPal and Stripe together constitute about 82% of the payment processing services market. If PayPal and Stripe both refuse to do business with Subscribestar as a result of the Patreon Sargon of Akkad situation, then their actions may, by right of reason, constitute a group boycott. Multiple social media platforms terminating the accounts of a particular content creator may also constitute a de facto group boycott of a business. Group boycotts, as I said before, are violations of antitrust law if the purpose is to eliminate competition, control the market, or control access to the market. Subscribestar is a direct competitor with Patreon. There is quite a bit of circumstantial evidence which suggests that this might be a group boycott against Subscribestar, just like the mass deplatforming of controversial creators could be a group boycott against those creators who also constitute the face of small businesses. Can I prove it? Um, no. Just no. Like any other allegation, especially those which might wind up in court, there has to be hard evidence. Subscribestar must prove that Stripe and PayPal collaborated to deny them the ability to conduct business. Alex Jones and other content creators must prove that their platforms which banned them collaborated with each other in deplatforming them to establish a group boycott argument. The first and potentially biggest obstacle to proving this is that all of the companies alleged to have violated the law are based in California. California is therefore the state of jurisdiction, and the potential plaintiffs are not necessarily residents of California. The courts in California tend to be sympathetic to these platform companies as well, given the political climate and the fact that more than a few of the potential plaintiffs are activists, social media pundits, and or producing offensive content. Now where have I heard those sentiments before? The good news for those most affected by the actions of Patreon, PayPal, and Stripe is that many of these creators do not actually hold fringe political beliefs or deliberately produce offensive content, and many of them are neither activist nor commentary channels. There's also some good news in the fact that the timing of the actions and their nature strongly suggests prima facie evidence of collaboration. Patreon has also publicly made false statements regarding their own terms of usage policies and enforced the regulatory sections of their terms of service agreement in a manner not enumerated within the terms of service. Patreon may in fact be liable for breach of contract for deleting Sargon's page, in addition to the possible violations of antitrust law. If a judge holds that Patreon's practice of deplatforming creators without prior notice or a chance to remedy the situation, or even in accordance with their own terms of usage agreements, constitutes a breach of contract, then Jack Conte has already admitted publicly to his company's breach of contract liability. Patreon's real defense is the lack of legal code or precedent in this situation, plus the host of lawyers companies like them have on retainer which few content creators can afford to hire. If, in fact, these actions become a matter for the courts, then it's entirely possible that the Supreme Court may be called upon to decide this matter. That would certainly help to clarify matters and establish legal precedent for the future. And my understanding is that Congress is also forming committees to review the situation that exists on social media and craft legislation that will end the Wild West nature of this business sector. 
Yes, I said business sector. Online content creation is a hybrid of the tech and entertainment sectors. If it's not considered to be a separate sector, then it should be. As much as I don't like the government interfering in the functioning of the free market, there are very few laws regulating how this business sector functions because it is relatively new. Creators make and post their content out of a love for doing it, or we would have far less content available to consume. The platforms can effectively get away with whatever actions they take because there's no guarantee to access for creators, nor are there effective remedies for when the platforms delete years of work in a day. Even if the content remains on the publishing platform, the secondary platforms used to monetize that content more effectively can wipe out the profits of that monetization just as swiftly. Either can effectively destroy the small businesses that create the bulk of online content at a whim, with little or no chance to recover for the creator. But if creators fight back by attempting to create their own platforms or transaction companies, or jumping to a new company, then the existing platforms destroy these new companies by preventing them from using the major existing services. Ladies and gentlemen, this is absolutely unethical. The platforms effectively control access to the marketplace where content creators do business. They effectively control how creators can monetize their businesses and when, and in fact where, because there are really no alternatives for creators with anywhere near the same reach or the same package of services. I hear that Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin are working on developing an alternative monetization platform. I hope that they do. I also hope that the Federal Trade Commission initiates an investigation into the actions of Patreon, PayPal, and Stripe to determine if those companies have violated antitrust laws in their actions against Subscribestar. In my opinion, the platforms are not functioning as publishers. They are functioning as gatekeepers to public forums, and that apparent function parallels the functions of public utilities. Now, public utilities have a right to earn a profit for providing access, but they do not have a right to withhold access from customers simply because they don't like what the customers are doing. There are only two reasons for which public utilities are justified in denying access to their customers, non-payment and illegal activity. The platforms don't have to like the content. So long as it is not breaking the law, the platform should not be allowed to remove it. They can limit access to the content to allow parents to protect the children, and they can place the content into a limited state to protect advertising revenues, but they should not be able to remove it outright. As for the member services companies like Patreon, they really must treat creators like clients for whom they provide a contract service. If they are going to regulate which business practices, i.e. content, they will allow, then their terms of use contract must be absolutely clear regarding what kind of content is acceptable content for which they will provide transaction services, and whether they are going to look at any behavior not directly associated with the content being funded. Then both they and the creators will have to abide by the terms of that contract, and creators will have a mechanism to resolve issues without destroying their businesses in the process. The social justice nature of Patreon, PayPal, and Stripe's actions in the decisions made regarding Sargon, Lauren Southern, and other creators comes through, especially when, as Tim Poole has repeatedly pointed out, There are far more offensive organizations out there using Patreon, PayPal, and Stripe to crowdfund their activities, including da-da-da-da, Antifa, the quintessential social justice warriors who actually plan violent protests and commit violent criminal acts. Really, guys? It's a freaking meme. Get woke, go broke. That's why you have dozens of major accounts shutting down and hundreds if not thousands of subscribers canceling their memberships. We don't want to do business with you anymore. Not because we're bigots or because we agree with what Sargon said. I personally find the word that Sargon used offensive. And even if I didn't, I know that it is a word that has, can, and will destroy reputations, careers, and businesses. The problem for me is how Patreon handled the situation how they doubled down by lying publicly about their terms of usage, and how they, together with PayPal and Stripe, have acted to torpedo Subscribestar immediately upon seeing a bunch of major clients jump to their competitor. 
Because you abused our trust, Jack, your company could wind up being charged with antitrust violations. Ironic, isn't it? Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Check out these channels to which I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell. 